Happy morning to everyone. Welcome to my channel Biotech Info. Hope everyone has celebrated the Diwali festival. Me, this festival of light should bring full of happiness in our lives and a sparkle of joy. And today I'm going to take the class of biological classification part two that is about the kingdom Pratista. Welcome back. Let us get into the details about the kingdom Pratista. Pratista includes the single celled eukaryotic organisms. Eukaryotic organisms only represents that it is consisting of a well defined nucleus with a membrane bound organelles. And this members of the Pratista, a few are consisting of a flagella and cilia for the body movement. And also it is forming a link to the other kingdoms like plantae, animalia and fungi. And they will go for the process of reproduction by asexual and sexual methods by the cell fusion or a zygote formation. And also the members, a few members of this protista are photosynthetic consisting of the pigments which is responsible for the preparation of the food material. It is divided into five categories that is first one is chrysophytes, second is dinoflagellates, third one is euglenoids, fourth one is slime mouths and fifth one is a protozoans. So let us get into the details about the characteristics of the first category that is a chrysophytes. Chrysophytes includes the group of diatomous and also the golden algae which we are going to call it as desmids. Desmids represents the members includes the diatoms as well as a golden algae. And what is the habitat of this particular organisms is they are marine as well as a fresh water habitat or the environment. The organisms are going to survive in this particular environment and also they are microscopic they are very minute and they float freely or passively in the water currents and that's why they are going to call as planktons why we have to call the planktons because they are microscopic they are photosynthetic and they are moving passively in the water currents that's why we are giving a name called as in planktons for the examination point of view this is very important plankton is coming under the category of the chrysophytes next one is cell wall is made up of a two thin overlapping shell like structure are going to fix each other like a soap box and this cell wall is made up of a substance called as in silica that's why it is indestructible the cell wall of the chrysophytes is made up of a substance called the silica that's why it is an indestructible and also it is leaving behind the structures of the cell wall in the habitat and forming like a diatomous earth how it is forming diatomous earth and this is gritty the soil is so gritty that's why it is going to be used for the preparation of a polishes for the preparation of the syrups and also for the filtration of the oils that gritty soil which is formed by a diatomous earth which is because of an accumulation of the cell wall deposits which is made up of silica they are going to be used for the filtration of oils or polishing and also or you can even call it as polishes filtration of oils and syrups these are the characteristic of the chrysophytes most important characters are what the diatoms which is otherwise going to be called as a producers in the ocean and also the cell wall is made up of silica and which is useful commercially for the preparation of polishes syrups as well as a filtration of the 
oils and also the next one comes is a dinoflagellates is a second category dinoflagellates are these members of dinoflagellates they are marine and also photosynthetic they are marine and they are also photosynthetic but the pigments which are present in this particular dinoflagellates are differ because they are going to impart a color not only green but it is going to impart yellow brown blue and also red because of the presence of pigments that we know that there are so many pigments are present like xanthophylls rhodophylls phycobilins which are responsible for giving the pigmentation of that particular organism and next one it is consisting of a cell wall which is made up of a stiff cellulose how it is made up of stiff cellulose and that too in the form of a plate like structures how it is it is made up of a plate like structures and it is consisting of two flagella i said you one of the characteristic of the protista is it is consisting of a flagella or the cilia for the body movement so in dinoflagellates we can see that character consisting of a two flagella but the two flagella how they are arranged that is also important in this particular dinoflagellates one flagella is a long longitudinally arranged and one it is transversely arranged in between the cell plates of the cell wall right and next one is it includes one member called as an red dinoflagellate example is gaunulox in the examination point of view this is very very important because you will get a question from this that is what is an example which is an example of a dinoflagellate which is imparting red color or red tides then you are going to call that one as an gaunulox why it is going to be called like that actually it is going to multiply what is happening here rapid multiplications of cell is going to takes place and because of that one red tide like appearance it is going to give that's why we are going to call that one as an red dinoflagellate example we can say it as an gaunulox toxins only represents that they have the poisonous substance and in taking of that poisonous substance even kill the organisms so because of this toxin substance which is going to be released by them it may even kill the other marine animals such as fishes if you are watching my video for the first time don't forget to subscribe my channel click the bell icon if you click the bell icon you will get the notifications of our upcoming videos related to the ncert 11th and 12th standard biology section and also the current affairs now coming to the point of euglenoids mostly the members of this euglenoids are fresh water organisms and they are going to stay in a stagnant water and instead of cell wall in this particular euglenoids you are going to see one more characteristic feature unique characteristic feature that that is it is instead of a cell wall it is consisting of a protein rich layer which is going to be called it as pellicle which is giving an flexibility to this particular organisms called euglena and next one it makes their body flexible which makes their body flexible pellicle and what it is consisting of it is consisting of a rich protein layer and it is consisting of two flagella that is one is short and one is long and next it is going to behave most members of this particular euglenoids are going to be called as an photosynthetic but if sunlight is going to be deprived then they are going to behave as an heterotrophs by predating on the other organism that is one more characteristic features of euglenoid what is that one first one is it is consisting of a protein rich layer called as an pellicle instead of cell wall and third or second one is it is going to behave like an heterotrophs when the sunlight it is going to be deprived it is going to be depending on the other organism and behaving like an heterotroph by predating on the other organisms and pigments are identical of those of higher plants 
let us get into the characteristic of the next one that is a sly mouths these are going to call it as saprophytic protist saprophytes means what the organisms which are going to depend on dead and decaying organism so here the same thing it's going to happen the body moves this body is going to move along the decaying twigs and also the dried leaves engulfing the organic matter but in suitable conditions what's it's going to happen means they form an aggregation they form an aggregation called as plasmodium in the suitable conditions they are going to form an aggregation called as an plasmodium which grow and spread over several feet it's going to form several feet in again unfavorable conditions this plasmodium is going to differentiate it's going to differentiate and forming a fruiting body is called as an spores what is that with in suitable conditions it's going to form an aggregation called as an plasmodium and it is going to be called it as an pseudophyte several pseudophytes is going to form again in unfavorable conditions if this plasmodium is going to differentiate itself into a fruiting bodies called as bearing fruiting bodies which is bearing the spores and at their tips what is that one fruiting body which is consisting of the spores at their tips and these spores are possessing the true walls and they are going to be dispersed by the air currents let us get into the characteristics of last one that is a protozoans all protozoans are heterotrophic and live as predators or parasites first one is amoeboid protozoan which is going to live in a fresh water sea water and also moist soil and the move and capture their prey by putting out pseudopodia how they are going to take in or engulfing in the food material means by stretching or moving of the false feet which is otherwise going to be called it as pseudopodia and example is amoeba and you can uh, see the flagellated protozoans is a second one here these are free living and or parasitic but flagellated protozoan only represents that it is consisting of a flagella and examples is uh, trypanosoma which is going to cause the sleeping sickness what is that one trypanosoma gambiae which is causing the sleeping sickness it is uh, going to be called it as an example for the flagellated protozoan which is a free living and it is a parasitic one the third one is ciliated protozoa ciliated protozoa only represents that it is consisting of a thousands of cilia and example is paramecium and it is consisting of a cavity which you are going to call it as an gullet what is that cavity which we are going to call that is called as an gullet and that opens outside of the cell surface and the coordination of all the cilia will steer the food material which is present outside to enter into the body of the paramecium with the help of a cilia that's why we are going to call that one as an ciliated protozoan example is a paramecium which is consisting of thousands of cilia and also an empty cavity called as a gullet next one is sporozoans those are infections and in their life cycle we can see one stage called as an spore stage what is that one infectious they are going to cause infection and the spore like stage in their life cycle and they are very notorious and the notorious example is a plasmodium which is otherwise going to be called it as malarian parasite which is going to cause malaria which is having a staggering effect on the human population and example is a malarian parasite